I don't think of myself primarily as a philosopher. Philosophers write for other philosophers. And philosophers are nowadays nearly always professors. I'm not a professor anymore, so I, what I do is I think of myself as a writer. And who do I write for? I write for anyone who is discontented with the prevailing view of the world. I don't write to convert them to my view. I'm not interested in converting anyone. I'm not even interested in persuading anyone of anything, but simply to present to them through literature or through the lives of interesting people some thoughts and questions that they might find stir their imagination and then they can do with that what they want. Londres, verão de 2013. John Gray, filósofo. Para muitos, um pessimista. O progresso é um mito que sobrevive. Se os humanos amam a liberdade, grande parte da história foi um erro. A tortura e a barbárie não residem apenas em lugares distantes. A humanidade pode não caminhar para um destino. Não avançamos passo a passo para um mundo melhor. E a civilização liberal apoia-se em sonhos. E, no entanto, existe conforto. Há 7 mil milhões de seres humanos vivos que beneficiam dos avanços da ciência, do conhecimento, da saúde pública e da produtividade agrícola. As mulheres e as minorias estão a vencer a luta pela igualdade. John Gray, um pessimista esclarecido, talvez. Encontramos um homem maduro, afável, discreto. Sentámos num canto acolhedor, no jardim da sua agência literária londrina. Tarde amena, árvores, uma ligeira brisa. Pensar o desenvolvimento humano e a liberdade levou-nos do último livro de John Gray, O Silêncio dos Animais, para as ideias de progresso, ciência, civilização e, claro, os mitos. Os bons e os maus mitos. Do you think that progress is a useful idea? It's the idea of progress that is um, the chief modern faith that I'm interrogating. Not so much utopia, because nearly all modern belief, believers in progress would deny that they're utopians, uh, but the idea of um, that in human life, I mean, the central belief, the central faith, or as I would call it, the central myth of progress, is that human affairs, human events, human development can replicate that of science, or more generally, the growth of knowledge. That's to say that um, in human history, just as errors are corrected in science and human knowledge grows, so the evils of human life can be gradually diminished or even eliminated, but at any rate, diminished in human life, step by step across the generations. That's the central idea of um, the myth of progress. Now, as you know from my book, The Silence of Animals, I think there is progress in that sense in science. I'm not a postmodernist or a relativist about science. Um, not my reason for rejecting that postmodernist view of science is not so much a philosophical reason as, if you like, a, a brute fact. The reason that there are nearly around seven billion human beings on the planet and not only a million, as there were uh, um, 
I don't know, um, uh, 100,000 years ago or even less is because of the spin-offs from the growth of knowledge from science in um, intensive farming, uh, public health, uh, and many other respects. So I think there is progress in science. Human knowledge does increase and grow, and even the rate of growth of human knowledge is accelerating. But the myth of progress is the belief that um, ethical and political life, or if you like, civilization, um, can uh, um, uh, advance in a similar way. And far from believing that, which as you say in the 19th century and the early 20th century was associated with imperialism, that belief, uh, uh, later it became connected with communism, uh, later after that then with certain types of neoconservatism and of um, free market liberalism. Uh, the, the myth is that uh, human life, human history is tending towards a kind of steady um, cumulative advance in which uh, once a certain level of civilization has been achieved, it can be maintained and built on so that you later on you can ascend to ever higher. Now this needn't be inevitable. Many people who think this need, don't think it's inevitable. And it needn't be tending towards what we usually think of as a utopia, but it's a kind of steady Progress. progressive. Now, I think that is a myth, because if you look at the century that ended within our lifetimes, the 20th century, it's a period of, in which um, the level of barbarism was greater than ever before in human history, not only in scale, uh, absolutely vast, uh, uh, um, ex if you like, experiments in barbarism in Nazi Germany, in um, uh, Soviet Russia, and in Mao's China. Um, but I would say even in the intensity of uh, um, barbarism, I mean, throughout history there have been persecuted minorities, women were persecuted in the period of um, the witchcraft for, Crazes, gays have been persecuted repeatedly in Christian times. Um, racial, ethnic, and other minorities have been murdered. And of course, in Latin America, there was a huge destruction of uh, indigenous peoples when um, the Spaniards came. So the, all that's happened before. But where the 20th century was um, uh, distinctive is that the knowledge and technology which had been gained through the advance of science was used to industrialize killing uh, on a, an enormous scale and also to carry out terrible experiments as happened in the Nazi period during the Holocaust. Uh, and against the background of the belief that these terrible um, uh, uh, examples of barbarism, atrocities, barbaric atrocities, were in some sense or other justified by scientific theory because we forget that uh, uh, sometimes that Nazism was not only an, an, an extreme version of uh, traditional European prejudices against gypsies and uh, uh, gays as well as, of course, and primarily against Jews, but also um, that in the Nazi period, um, many of the Nazis believed that it had a scientific basis. Uh, that they, they, many of them took from 19th century uh, uh, um, German biologists' theories of racial hierarchy. So it was just a so-called scientific racism, just as in the Soviet Union, dialectical materialism was supposed to be scientific. So what's distinctive about the 20th century, I suppose, is that um, um, the uh, atrocities that were committed, forms of barbarism that were uh, uh, perpetrated were larger and more intense, but also they were supposedly backed by science, backed by reason. Mm -hmm.